Welcome to the session Machine Vision with Neural Networks. My name is Patrick Schick. I'm Product Marketing Manager at IDS. And in the following session, we will discuss the possibilities of neural networks in machine vision. So what is our motivation for neural networks? We'll do a short mental model. Think about um, a colleague comes to you and tells you, please make a rule-based machine vision system which can clearly identify cameras. So then he would ask you, hey, how our cameras look like? What shall I, shall I search for? And you would, for example, tell him, okay, normally a camera looks like a rectangle where a circle is inside, a circle stands in for the lens. The developer would say, oh, pretty easy. I search for rectangles, I search for circles, they have to be, the circle has to be inside of the rectangle, and that's it, I found a camera. But then another colleague joins and tells, okay, but uh, from my point of view, a camera looks totally different. I see there a flash and the lens has normally a border around it. And maybe he also gives you a scribble how he thinks. And again, you say, okay, it's a little bit more tricky, but still, if I combine more elements, it's easy to identify as a camera. And then step by step, more colleagues came around the corner and described their imagination of a camera. They may be a video camera, they may have tripods, whatever. And now your rule-based system doesn't work well anymore because they also see it from different angles and so on. So we have to try something different. But before we dive into deep learning and neural networks, some other examples more from real life. So on the left upper side, you, we have a lot of bell peppers and uh, imagine the application you have to count bell peppers. So every bell pepper has a different shape, different size, different color. It looks from different directions, so that's not that easy in this case with rule-based machine vision. Down there, a not so typical application, but find the sausage. So we have different light environments, something are darker, something are brighter. Um, find and classify the sausage with a classical rule-based machine vision system. With deep learning, you learn what a sausage is and then it could find it. Another application, therefore, is that we, you could use it when you produce sausages. There we have real application where it uh, depends on the size, the shape, and the form factor of the sausage, if it is sausage is well produced or not. And uh, customers told us that with classical machine vision, rule-based, um, it is not easy to identify because it is a natural product and the uh, outlines and the uh, colors are always different and it's still a good sausage. On the right hand upper side, we have a parking space and we want to show which areas are occupied and which parking lots are free. In the first glance, this looks pretty easy and pretty well for a rule-based machine vision. Um, this was also even my first thought, but when I started discussing with this customer why he is doing this with deep learning, he told me, yeah, in this case, as you see there, it's pretty easy. But think about rain. It rains, a car goes away, and there is still a silhouette of a car on the uh, floor. So a classical machine vision system would also still identify a car because there are different colors and so on and so on. You even have changing lighting directions. So this is also a case which deep learning is stable against. So again, here a topic which is much more easier to handle with deep learning. Last but not least, the dish table, so which direction has the Salomon? Um, we also have this as a real application from customers. They cut Salomon in a big production area and uh, they have to know in which direction the Salomon is on the conveyor belt, uh, is the, the mouth front or back. With rule-based machine vision, it's hard to identify in which direction the Salomon is currently looking and they have to arrange then in one step with a robot the Salomon into the right direction. 
with deep learning, it's pretty easy to learn where is front, where is back, where is the mouth, where is the tail, what's the upper tail and the lower tail. And also, by the way, think about the direction of the asparagus to identify how many these are and in which direction they are currently placed. So also here we see deep learning with neural networks plays the major role when a human can easily decide this is good, this is bad, this is free, this is not free. With our knowledge, we can easily decide, we can easily classify, but for a rule-based system, it's not easy to identify or to classify because the, the parameters to uh, the input parameters to classi for classification are hard to describe because there are more weak and not that clear like the camera we saw before with the rectangle and the circle. And such kind of applications we often see when it comes to natural resources like fruit, fruit and vegetables. So now let's dig deeper into those convolutional neural networks. First of all, I will give a short overview where the, the term comes from and give you an idea of the timeline since when we are working with this technology before we then really uh, before we then come to real examples where we show how to train network and how networks can run. First of all, a little bit arrangement of the terms. In general, we are talking about artificial intelligence. There is a lot of topics where machine learning is one of the parts of artificial intelligence. And machine learning, as we all know, is nothing magic. It's based on algorithm statistics. And deep learning is a special part of this machine learning topic where we focus on neural network. And one special part of these neural networks are the convolutional neural networks, which showed in the past that these networks are perfectly made for uh, working with images. When we narrow down the AI in the terms of convolutional neural networks, it solves specific problems, it learns from examples, can do inference on new data, not seen before data, deep learning utilized neural networks, and those convolutional neural networks are popular in image processing. CNN's deep learning AI is a is a big hype at the moment. We have to bring it to the point that CNN's and deep learning is not really new. So in 1950, Alan Turing defines a test where I say, okay, if a, a counterpart in a, for example, a discussion is not identifiable as a machine um, because it reacts like a human, then we can speak artificial intelligence. So even in 1950, this started. Step by step, the technology developed further. There are then uh, methods how we could train images and where how we could enhance such nets. But still, deep learning was in the area of science. But this changes 2009 rapidly because we had new hardware available, we could now train networks on GPUs. And this changes dramatically the usage of uh, neural networks because now we have the ability to train way faster our nets than with classical CPUs. Uh, since 2009, we have a, a lot of free available image data. So, for example, ImageNet was opened 2009 and it, it is a collection of uh, freely used images. And also this was not available before. And with all this technology available and those development, we now can solve problems a different way. Let's think about a camera example. We don't have to program now rule-based every type of camera we could imagine. No, we have to have images of every type of camera we can imagine. We label it and then we can give this to a training system which trains our CNN models. And after this, we get a neural network which is able to classify cameras because the net itself learns what are the reasonable parameters 
for cameras. So when we look at the task, which has to do for classification, this changed now also dramatically. Because in rule-based machine vision system, someone has to classify the items, in this case the vegetables. Then he has to model the specific features per class. And last but not least, a developer has to implement an algorithm to clearly identify these features. Working with deep learning, you still have to classify the vegetables, but then you give it to a neural network and AI finds these features for you. And I would say this is one of the hardest steps to find the right features to get a stable classification. But where can we use deep learning now? Yes, we have to find the right problems for deep learning because deep learning cannot solve everything. Typical applications are applications where uh, qualitative decisions has to be done, like this doodle shows a person, these grapes look rotten, a piece is missing. Applications where also a human could easily judge. Applications which are not going not so good with deep learning are applications where you have to measure something or read something, like... How big is the diameter of the hole? What's this barcode? And what's about the brightness of this image? These applications can be supported by deep learning, but not directly solved by deep learning at the moment. I hope that I could motivate that deep learning is really a technology which we are now able to solve issues we never thought before would be able to solve. And I hope you are now looking forward uh, to start projects with deep learning, but now you're asking yourself, okay, and how to start? Where can I start? Where did I get help? So, help is on the way. But as usual, before help is there, there are challenges on this way. A lot of hurdles are to take from the point, have an idea what to solve with deep learning until the time you have a a freely available network. Images you need. But then comes the one of the biggest hurdles you have to have the know-how, how to develop and code training platforms for neural networks. For sure, there are a lot of free examples available and you can reuse this and, and start developing your own code. But then still you need hardware where you can let run the training platform on it. And this hardware is normally expensive hardware because you need a lot of parallel processing on it. So a lot of GPUs are included of this. And then you have a ready to use CNN. But set parameters during this way where a lot of knowledge has to be there. Because for a perfect training, you have to set specific parameters for training a network, you have to know which data has to be used as test data and so on and so on. So a lot of special knowledge is necessary. Here is a short overview about some words, buzzwords you have to know, extraction, feature mapping, neocognition, backpropagation, and so on and so on, arrow backpropagation, all things you currently don't work with or an expert in most of us i would say i don't think so but there's a light at the end of this tunnel because training platforms are available one of it is our ids nxt lighthouse training platform so there we offer a service that you only have to upload data to our platform you define how fast your net shall run on our inference camera so we have also the hardware to let a neural network run, and that's it. So you have to bring the images, you have to label the images, upload it to our training platform, IDS NXT Lighthouse, let our servers train for you. You don't have to buy hardware, you don't have to understand how to train networks. This is all done in this cloud system. And after this, you are able to let these neural networks run on our IDS NXT cameras. And working with Lighthouse is really pretty easy. You have to log in with your IDS account. Then you have to upload your Im labeled images to the cloud and you get a network back. And to be even more efficient, we developed 
an FPGA-based CNN accelerator for our IDIS NXT camera family. So you can upload this network directly to the cameras. Neural networks are normally huge networks and you need a lot of calculation power to execute them. But we developed an FPGA core, our IDS Deep Ocean core, which enables us to let the networks run on the camera. So we, we shrink them and optimize them for our cameras. One of the major benefits is that as we know the network structure and we know the hardware of our cameras, we can give assumptions about the inference time. More than assumptions, we really know how long the inference maximum could ta uh, would take on the camera. So this is a this is a huge benefit compared to other inference systems. With this tools on hand, we really could say with our IDS NXT Ocean system, we offer you a directly jumpstart into the world of deep learning. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it was an interesting session for you. And if you have further questions regards deep learning and our IDS NXT solutions, do not hesitate to contact us. Have a nice day.